for me, Mama, who gave me no way to handle things, who made me so bad, Mama, the weeping, Mama, the angels, no sleep in heaven or Bethlehem. Thanks, guys. We are the cast of Spring Awakening. Um, the show goes up in the Oberon between November 30th and December 5th. Go to awakening at Oberon.com. That's awakening at Oberon.com for tickets and more information. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your lecture.
So this is or was CS50. My name is David Malin, and I will be your instructor one last time today.、Um, a word of thanks to the huge team this year that's made everything quite、uh, possible. This is a record-sized staff that we've had this year. If you guys want to come on stage、um, in the edge chair, full circle, like the beginning of the term. Only. Only a few were able to skip class for this today, but our team of TFs and CAs numbers 100 this year for the first time in history. So、um, without them, we certainly could not have made this semester possible. And a huge thanks too to to Barry and Kevin and Abbas and Chris and really everyone who's been working behind the scenes to make everything here possible this year. And particularly to those folks with whom you've gotten familiar on camera: Jason in sections, Tommy in walkthroughs, and my heartfelt thanks to Rob Bo. And Matt Chartier, without whom we would not have this extraordinary team. Allow us to take a look at the team that was CS50 staff 2011 here. If I was just another dusty record on the shelf, would you blow me off and play me like everybody else? If I asked you to scratch my back, could you manage that? That give me the edge, you can try, but I can handle that. Furthermore, I apologize for any skipping tracks. This is the last girl that played me left a couple cracks. I used to, used to, used to, used to. Now I'm over that. 'Cause holding grudges over love is ancient artifacts. If I could only find a note to make you understand, I'd sing it softly in your ear and grab you by the hand. Just keep me stuck inside your head like your favorite tune, and know my heart's a stereo, the only place for you. <laughs>
So Matt and Rob unfortunately could not be here today, but we thought we would conference them in an absentia with a little clip that both Rob and Matt prepared in advance. So I give you Rob Bowden. Hey guys, good work. <laughs> Matt's was perhaps a bit more heartfelt for us all. <laughs> oh, hi. Didn't see you. <laughs> My name is Matthew Chartier. You might remember me from such CS50 events as Section and Quincy Office Hours. Though I'm unfortunately not able to join you in lecture today, I still wanted to take the opportunity to impart some thoughts as we near the end of the semester. I said at the start of this year that CS50 is one of those rare courses at Harvard College that is sufficiently challenging, populous, elaborate, and fun to create a sense of community throughout the entire course and to provide an experience that is not only useful, but memorable. My hope is that now, just a few months later, you have a more personal understanding of what I was talking about. But as rewarding as CS50 was for me as a student, it's been even more so as a member of staff. Over my last three years with the course, I've had the opportunity to work with some of the most talented and passionate people I've encountered throughout my college career. The dedication and personality of this course's staff are what will make all the ambitious and unique things that we do possible, and the friendship and camaraderie I've found among them has been one of the highlights of my time at Harvard. On that note, I'd like to thank the CAs, TFs, Glenn, Chris, Rob, and David for all the work they've put into making the course possible, both this year and years past. It's truly been one of the most engaging and rewarding experiences of my life, and I'll remember it fondly. I hope that you will do. This is CS50, and I'll see you at the back. Matt Chartier. So in just a bit, our team of TFs and CAs will be joining us downstairs for cake. If you guys want to begin the preparations thereof, Tommy can lead the way, I think. Uh, in the meantime, a couple of announcements as we dive into this wrap-up today. So as you think about where you want to go with your final projects after the CS50 fair, know that in addition to opportunities like, <laughs> okay, Tommy, follow them. Um, <laughs> So in addition to opportunities like the Hack Harvard Group, know too that the UC has begun to support student projects that, uh, are, that aim to improve the quality of our experience here on campus. So these slides will be online if you'd like to read up more on this, but know that this opportunity from the UC now exists. And from CIS as well, over January term this year, if you were interested in learning a bit about design from actual designers from a very well-known company called IDO, know that this workshop will be a hands-on opportunity during which winter session to do exactly that and be mentored by some experts in the field. So head to that URL if of interest. Uh, we indeed have some cakes, three cakes no less. Uh, normally each year we try to come up with very clever slogans to emblazon on these cakes uh, despite the confusion it creates with Shaw's where we have them made. Um, this year, we simply went with cake number zero, one, and two, all of which await you downstairs. Not as funny as it was in my head. Okay. <laughs> and now the retrospective. So 13 some weeks ago, we dove into this programming language called Scratch, with which you hopefully had a lot of fun and began to explore some of the fundamentals of computer science and programming. Well, for those submissions, the teaching fellows reviewed all of them way back when and nominated, as is our tradition, a few for some fun uh, awards of sorts, whereby these projects will become immortal in the course's gallery online. Um, the one that the staff nominated as the cutest sc scratch project this year is by uh, Brett, and we will let it speak here for itself. Allow me to play this year's cutest scratch project from 13 weeks back.
second scratch award for this year goes to a new category, the most inceptive. Allow me to play this one here. This one is interactive, so I shall play along as instructed. I shall hit A. <laughs> I shall hit C. I shall hit E. <laughs> I shall hit F. <laughs> Why don't we cut it off there to leave it suspenseful? We will link this online so you can finish the story. And so finally, that was by Michael Hoffman.、Uh, finally, by Blake Walsh is this year's most amazing, a recreation of a classic game. I actually practiced that this morning. All right. <laughs> so, we have some other awards that we typically bestow and then honor on the course's website, namely that for Problem Set 5. In addition to recovering this year's photos, recall that you were challenged to then go find those folks somewhere on campus. And if you did, we promise to bestow upon you a fabulous award. Well, we had one runner up. This was from Uh, you can guess whose section here. Brian Zhang submitted this on behalf of his section here, but they only found a few of the staff members and were definitely in the end bested by Lucas Freitas' section with Neil Wu's section. Pictured here posing quite awkwardly with two of our team members here.、Um, but Lucas thought he'd be funny, and when he submitted his photographs to us, he wrote us the following note Hey, David, in anticipation of this problem set, I spent the past several days snapping photos, creeping TFs, I don't know, all of which were saved by my digital camera as JPEGs on a four gigabyte compact flash card. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not very good with computers, and I somehow deleted them all. <laughs> Thankfully, in the computer world, deleted tends not to mean deleted so much as forgotten. My computer insists that the CF card is now blank, and I'm pretty sure it's lying to me. I attached a copy of my memory card to this email. <laughs> Hope you can create a program to recover them. So, in problem set six, recall there was a bit of a challenge that of the big board to write the program that used the least amount of CPU cycles and the least amount of RAM. Well, this is a system that gets gamed every year, and it actually is a wonderful tool for recruiting since those atop the big board are inevitably cheating in some clever technical way.、Um, so, here are the top 10 from this year's big board.、Um, some of these times we are pretty sure are not actually possible. In particular, you'll notice that a Certain Daniel Robinson somehow has the curious number 1337 <laughs> as his running time. So it turns out there are ways to cheat the system, but what,、uh, 
This will only make us better at detecting such things next year. But the top 10 is certainly a nice place to be. But we had another big board in problem set seven. This one, too, attracts a bit of cleverness every year, whereby you were challenged to invest some 10,000 virtual dollars. Curiously, my penny stock has actually been performing very well over the past several weeks, but I was significantly outdone by Kenny. <laughs> So, congratulations to Kenny for being atop this year's big board. Now, as we look ahead, what remains still, even after today, is the CS50 hackathon, for which you should have received an email about RSVPing. And then thereafter is the true climax of the course on December 9th, a Friday, the first、uh, in the midst of reading period. And this is this year's CS50 fair. And it promises to be bigger and better than ever, and to get you excited, and to get your friends excited about dropping by the fair that day. The teaching fellows have put together, along with the CAs, a little video. Video edited by our own Julia Middleman. So I give you this year's CS50 Fair promo. I'm shuffling. About life after 50. So, you've spent the past several weeks exploring all sorts of new tools and languages and environments, but otherwise tethered to your own laptop and particularly the CS50 appliance. Realize, though, that there are all sorts of directions you can go in after 50, both academically as well as on your own, even without future coursework, so that you can program on your own. Machines.、Um, I would be remiss if I didn't point out a new course that's being offered this spring on mobile software engineering.、Um, though this will essentially pick up where CS50 left off, spending about a third of the semester on object oriented JavaScript programming and web programming in that space, as well as the latter two thirds of the semester on iOS programming, iPhones and iPads. Ultimately, it's meant to be a software engineering course on how to write good and better software, and particularly how to collaborate with a partner. And so you'll be encouraged to. Enroll in the class with a friend with whom you'll be able to work on the courses project. So, more details can be found at courses.cs50.net. And now, as for using your own hardware and own software after CS50, it turns out that the CS50 appliance, more than just a CS50 specific tool, is actually quite generalizable. So, even I and a lot of the TFs have started using our own CS50 appliance for writing code and working on projects completely unrelated to CS50 simply because it is this self contained appliance. It's the self contained server that can run web code, C code, Python, Perl, PHP, all sorts of languages can be installed in, if not even there already. And so, it allows you then to have a nice, clean, sort of industry standard environment with which to program. However, with that said, if you're a Mac user, know then that you can indeed continue using the appliance in a manner similar to what you've been doing. But if you want to take things to the next level, if you're running Snow Leopard or Lion, you can download for free,、um, with some exceptions, well, details are in the CS50 manual, a program called Xcode from Apple. 
which is an integrated development environment, IDE. It's sort of a much fancier version of gedit that allows you to write code, debug code,、uh, version control code, and a whole slew of other features. That is specifically tied to Mac OS, but it's probably one of the slickest IDEs out there. We'll actually use it by nature of Mac、uh, and iPhone programming in CS164. Free alternatives include Eclipse and NetBeans and a simpler code blocks, the last of which is C and C specific, but the first two are Eclipse. And NetBeans quite popular, not only for Java, with which some of you guys might have experience, but also for C, C, PHP, and all sorts of other l a n g u a g e And then lastly, there's this very popular toolkit called XAMPP,、uh, which is free software that includes、um, an Apache web server, the same thing the appliance runs, a MySQL installation, PHP installation, and even PHP MyAdmin. In short, if you don't want to use the CS50 appliance for whatever reason, you can still install all of those same tools very easily by downloading that free tool. And it will set up your Mac for you. And very similar options exist for Windows. The only ones worthy of distinction here are SigWin up there at the top. This is a、uh, toolkit for free that you can download that actually gives you GCC and GDB and a lot of the command line tools that we use this semester, but it gives them to you in the context of a Windows、uh, command prompt. So very similar to our own terminal window. And then Visual Studio for Microsoft is sort of the de facto standard in the Windows world for writing code for all sorts of languages. But realize there is a Non trivial intersection among these tools across the two platforms. And for Linux, too, and if you're running Linux, frankly, you probably have a bit more savvy when it comes to configuring these things, but almost these, all these same tools exist in a Linux environment as well. So realize, and certainly with the TFs or CAs help after the term ends, if you want to reach out, you, we can, you can certainly continue on independently of CS50. So, where did we start? So, this was like week zero. We started talking about algorithms and writing programs, albeit in a simple、uh, context of making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And we introduced this so that we could start thinking a little more methodically, introduced the idea of pseudocode, and then silly things like indentation and constructs like ifs and whiles that we can use in English or statements here, but we wanted to at least provide a mental model with which we then proceeded to something like Scratch. And Scratch 2 was hopefully fairly accessible, but even by way of Scratch, Were we able to talk about some things that we've kept using for 13 weeks, loops and conditions and variables and all sorts of other details that hopefully in week zero actually came pretty naturally because it just made sense and you drag and drop and things fit together logically and so things just clicked. Now, of course, a week later, things might have stopped clicking, at least not、uh, quite as easily. And we introduced C, with, in which we spent quite a number of weeks. But if you think back to maybe your emotional or visual reaction when you first saw this, now at least hopefully you could kind of Explain almost every one of these lines or symbols one by one, and some of them are intellectually interesting, some of them are not, semicolons are not, but GCC thinks they are. And so these same ideas, though, from scratch persisted even as we proceeded through、um, the world of GCC. And here, too, so that we don't leave you with any、uh, training wheels unremoved, realize that we definitely got into the habit with C code. Of writing make hello. And make, recall, it's not a compiler, it's a build utility, and this just makes it easier to write what would otherwise be very tedious commands to write. So if you wanted to actually run GCC manually back in week one or two, you would actually write probably something like this. And just from left to right, this is the program's name, of course, GCC. Dash G, GDB just meant include debugging symbols, information, so that you can actually set line,、uh, uh, sorry, so that you can set breakpoints and look at the contents of variables. Standard C99 just means use the very latest version of C.、Uh, the next one means、uh, warnings all, yell at me for all possible things I might do wrong, and make them errors, so to speak. Error is worse than warning in programming typically, so that you can't even compile your code if you have any warnings. So that's all those things meant. This, of course, was just the name of the file. And then there were these things at the end. So dash O hello just said name this thing hello instead of a.out, the default. And then these things here, dash L, dash L, dash L, Were link flags that say link in code that someone else wrote, that someone else compiled, and merge it into my own program. Because I realized that the end game is to actually output a file containing all sorts of zeros and ones, like this. And these zeros and ones are, of course, arranged in patterns and whatnot, but you didn't write all of those zeros and ones that were generated. Rather, you wrote hello.c, someone else wrote standardio.c, and by way of that header file and by way of these linker flags, you can tell GCC to. Merge those bits into one single binary that you can run at the command line or in a GUI, actually double click. But speaking of zeros and ones, a common question is folks prepared for. 
uh, quiz one this year was about these things called bitwise operators, which are actually quite powerful. And you'd explore things like this in more detail, perhaps in CS61 next fall. But bitwise operators do sort of what that name suggests they operate on variables bitwise, so one bit at a time. And the ones here we might use are these. And notice this is not a typo, this is not two ampersands or two vertical bars, it's indeed just one. This one means to take the bitwise and of two bits. And the next one means take the bitwise or of two bits. Bits. And so, all that means here is that if you take the bitwise and of two bits, well, 0、uh, and 0 is going to equal 0. 0 and 1 equals 0. 1 and 0 equals 0. 1 and 1. Equals one. In other, in other words, you can essentially think of bits as being Booleans, even though they are individual bits. And so those same concepts that we talked about, anding and oring, also can apply at the bit level here. But they're more useful than just. Um, doing simple arithmetic expressions like this. Rather, you can use this thing. This is something called XOR. And just so you've seen this one too, XOR is an interesting one in that it's the exclusive OR. So if you have two bits, a 0 and a 0, the XOR of this is 0 because XOR says the output is 1. If one and only one of the two bits are a one, the other one has to be the opposite. So that is not the case. They are not exclusively different. But this here would yield one. This here would yield one. This here would yield zero. So it's a slightly different pattern to the idea of zero,、uh, of and and or for those who don't quite have line of sight. So XOR simply means only one of those bits. Can be a one for the output to be a one. And then lastly, there are these other two operators, shifting, whereby you can actually use an operator that looks like that, two angled brackets pointing left or right, to actually move the bits in a variable or in a number to the left. Or to the right, effectively multiplying or dividing by two. Recall that in binary, the columns represent powers of two. So if you shift the bits, it's like multiplying everything by two or dividing by two. Well, now who cares? Well, as an at home exercise, a fun little trivia problem is to ask how can you actually exchange the contents of two variables without using a temporary variable? And that's a perfect question here since I only have two cups.、Um, so let me pour some, let's call it orange juice. Into this cup here. And let me pour some milk, just as we did a few weeks back, into this cup here. And it would be a magical thing if I could swap the contents of these two variables, these two cups, without using a third variable called temp.、Um, now, this too I rehearsed at home. And full disclosure, didn't work out so well at home. But the idea is the same. So if I want to swap milk and orange juice, I can go ahead and do this. And this was a nasty surprise last time. Okay, that was too much of something. All right. <laughs> okay. Glad I did it in that order. Okay. So now milk was here. Milk is now here. I want orange juice over here. So, oh, that's pretty good. That's good enough. Magic. <laughs> all right. So. The at home exercise is you can actually do this in code. If you don't want to spend the variable, the temporary variable, or you just want to be cool and you do want to exchange the contents of two variables without using a temporary variable, you can use this caret symbol here, which again is the XOR operator. And it literally boils down to this simple definition. Given two bits that are different,、uh, that are the same, you get zero. Given two bits that are the same, you get zero. Given two bits that are different, you get one. So you can apply this caret symbol, this bit. Wise operator to every one in the bits from left to right in A to the same bits that correspond in B, and you execute these three lines of code, and voila, literally. You will swap the contents of these two variables. Now, it's more just kind of a curious intellectual exercise for our purposes, since spending an additional 32 bits is not such a big deal these days. But indeed, it can be done. And that actually worked out a lot better than I expected. Thank you. <laughs> so, we started with Scratch, we transitioned to C, and then we ended up towards semester's end with the very user friendly, say, web world, in which the direction of software seems to be headed. So, we looked at HTML and made the simplest of HTML5 pages. And then we transitioned very quickly to more interesting code, namely a programming language called PHP, so that you could actually generate 
strings and content dynamically based on users' input. And then, of course, we introduced JavaScript so that you could also control the user's experience client side. And indeed, today, JavaScript can even be used server side for very high performing applications. And so that was it. From week zero up to week 12, you went from scratch then to this low level C language. And my God, what you will see at the CS50 fair, both by, done by you and done by your friends,、um, we don't doubt will. Impress, as is the tradition each year. So, another tradition that we have toward the end of the semester here is to pit some students against staff in a sort of contest of wits here, sort of Jeopardy style. And so, it's at this point that we need to take a few volunteers from the staff and a few volunteers from the students to come join me up here on stage for a little battling of wits. Come on down, Carl. Who else we got? Come on here. Two, three. We've got room for three more. Who are the shyer folks? Come on. Come on. All right.、Uh, let's go. Okay, here, because your friend's pointing at you. Here, here, here. All right, we'll stack the student team. Yeah, come on up. All right, and who are our staff? All right, if the staff want to take the end table there, students, if you want to line up here and form two arbitrary teams,、um, we need, let's see, one staff member who could run the board. Walkthrough boy, would you mind lending a hand? This feels like your thing. So, <laughs> so, we need a little scoreboard to be run here. So, in just a moment, if you want to go ahead and ask these three teams for three team names, and then we will keep track of their point values on that there blackboard.、Uh, if you guys want to squeeze in, yeah, just kind of、uh, kneel to the side as needed here as we get set, because using my newfound HTML skills, I made a little something here. With which we can do this. That is the extent of my HTML skills here. For, here we go, wait for it. This is Jeopardy! And now we'll go jump immediately into、uh, week one. So I apparently called for too many volunteers. That's okay.、Um, maybe if we could just shuffle the chairs down just a little bit. And if you guys want to nudge your way in,、um, staff name.、Uh, what are we going to call the staff here on the blackboard? Team name. <laughs> Team Bowden. Team Bowden. Team Bowden, it is. All right. Team、uh, student number two in the middle here.、Uh, Thundercats. Thundercats will be the middle team. And you guys here on the end, you will be? Zerg Rush. What's that? Zerg Rush. Zerg Rush? Zerg Rush. Okay. <laughs> Am I the only one that doesn't know what this word is? Starcraft? Oh, then I'm not. <laughs> okay. All right. So if you guys want to,、um, let's see, how many chairs do we have between? If you want to kind of,、uh, whoever you're friendliest with, maybe share a chair there. We're going to move immediately into single jeopardy here. We don't have all that much time to clear the board, so we'll do just a few minutes for single and for double jeopardy.、Um, in a coin toss before class,、uh, the Thundercats won, which means you have. <laughs> Control of the board. What week would you like a question from? And be sure when answering to speak into your mic, and Tommy will be our judge as to whose hand goes up first when answering a question. Not much strategy is required for this game. <laughs> What's that? Week one, Week one for $1,000. And your question is, and again, the first hand to go up will be called on Tommy to answer. What is the maximum value for a variable of type int? <laughs> Zergrush, I saw two. Which one of us? Any, you, just pick who speaks.、Uh, two to the 31 minus one. <sighs> so the student, oh, by the way, these are your questions that you submitted as part of problem set eight. <laughs> So that is correct, though the student was looking for 2,147,483,647, but I think we'll give it to them there for $1,000. Well done. You still, have, you still have control of the board. What would you like?、Uh, let's go week four for $200. Week four for $200. And your question is. <laughs> What must you always do after mallocating? <laughs> Thundercats? Free the memory. You must free the memory. That is indeed correct for 
$200. All right, you guys have control of the board. What category would you like? <laughs> Week two, 600 Week two for $600. And your question is going to be, a string is actually Thundercats. Yeah, that is right. A string is actually a pointer to a character. So again, another six hundred dollars. At some point, we should do arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still in control of the board. Time for a few more questions here in Single Jeopardy. Week three for eight hundred dollars. Your question here is going to be: In week three, why is linear search? Bad. Uh, Zergrush. <laughs> it's uh, order of n, which is suboptimal to the order of log n. That is correct. So, but speak toward the audience, not toward the Tommy. <laughs> it's order of n when it could be order of log n. Excellent. Very well done. Up to eighteen hundred dollars. Team Bowden is ever so slightly losing. <laughs> <laughs> So we have time for one more question here in Single Jeopardy. What would you like, uh, Zergrush? Let's go uh, week four for a thousand. Week four for one thousand dollars. So Team Bowden could move into second place with this question. <laughs> what is Emma's favorite kind of sort? <laughs> this is Emma's question. Thundercat. Um, bubble sort. Incorrect. <laughs> that is, I think, minus a thousand, though. <laughs> Team Bowden's strategy is paying off. <laughs> but did your hand go up? I think it did. We were just stretching. Team Bowden. <laughs> What is Emma's favorite kind of sort? Burgers. What is there to confer about? Bubble <laughs> sort. <laughs> Bubble sort? That's what they just said. Bogo sort. Bogo. Oh, Bogo sort. No, that too is incorrect. Emma's favorite kind of sort is Emma. Are you here? Merge sort. Several people know that her favorite sort is merge sort. All right, and now we move on to double jeopardy here. So in double jeopardy, point values are, of course, doubled. Um, Team Bowden will give you the choice of categories. What would you like? Weeks five through Rand. Rand for? For $2,000 in the Rand category. Name one function that it can be found in the CS50 library. Why are your hands up last? <laughs> Thundercats for 2,000. Uh, get string. Get string is correct. Nicely done for 2,000. All right. And we have time for just a couple more questions in double jeopardy now. I don't think. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, no, the Thundercats now have control of the board. What would you like? Uh, week, week five for 400. Week five for $400. Week five for, you know, I did implement some features here, so we can click that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I took CS50. All right. Malloc stores things in the quest. Okay. <laughs> Thundercats again. In the heap is correct. We have time for one more question in double jeopardy before moving to final jeopardy, at which point only people with non negative values can proceed. <laughs> All right, Thundercats, last question in double jeopardy. Week seven for 400. Week seven for $400. <laughs> Your question is going to be here. What did you build in this week's P set? 
Emma? Is it? <laughs> Thundercats. Greetings, Chris. CS50 shuttle. Oh. No. Incorrect. For minus 400. Oh, into the mic, though. Uh, Zerg Zergush? Our own personal website and uh, CS50 finance. The correct answer, I'm afraid, is up to Team Bowden. Would you know if it were? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, it was hash table. <laughs> Minus 400. <laughs> That's the answer. So <laughs> we now enter final Jeopardy with Thundercats in the lead with $2,200. Team Bowden with a lot of love and Zerg Rush with 1400 so we have time for these two here to duke it out. In front of you is a piece of paper. Um, we will read, uh, the category is going to be difficult. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead and choose a dollar amount that you're willing to wager out of your non-zero balance. No, you do the dollar amount first and then I tell you the question. Or the answer, and then you tell me the question. But we've not really been doing it that way anyway. <laughs> All right. And now, and Team Bowden, if you'd like to play along, that's fine. <laughs> oh, did they, we give them something? Oh, Tommy has given you $400, which means, in theory, the others should still be able to win. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> All right, so here we go. Your question here is convert 1337 to binary. Gonna need your answers. Almost there. All right, Tommy, math time. I can't do this. Okay, here we go. So let's see. Zergrush was in second, and you wagered all fourteen hundred dollars. This will be easy. So your answer was zero one zero one zero zero one one one. Zero, zero, one. Anyone playing along at home? <laughs> Which is correct for $1,400. Now, Thundercats, for had 2000 you wagered 1000 And one. And one. <laughs> which case you'd win slightly more. And so your answer was one zero one zero zero. One one zero one one, which is not right, I'm afraid. So that is a minus one thousand. And Team Bowden, if they didn't write down the answer as I read it, <laughs> let's give a round of applause then for our student teams here. So before we adjourn for cake downstairs in the pub with the CAs and TFs, uh, let me say it has been an honor being at the course's helm with you all and with our team of 100 this year. And we'd like to adjourn today with one final clip, a look behind the scenes of CS50. If we could one last time this semester dim the lights.
Every day I'm shuffling